We'll start the call off now with our first coach, and that's Alabama A&M. The Bulldogs fell to UAB in Birmingham this past weekend. They'll travel to Houston and face Texas Southern for a 7 p.m. kickoff this Saturday night. Good morning, Coach Beatty. Are you with us? Yes, sir. I'm with you. I'm with you. Thank you, Coach. Thanks for joining us. If you could talk about uh, your battle at UAB and uh, preview your conference game on the road in Houston. Yeah, it was a tough game. We we started out the game, I felt like we were in firm control and, and almost even dominating um, UAB for a while there. Um, we got after them up front on both sides of the ball and were playing really solid special teams. And um, we were down by seven at the, ha- at the half and then came back second half and just couldn't put together four quarters. So it was a really tough um, situation. Great day for football. It was a beautiful atmosphere. Uh, we just couldn't put together four full quarters. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, that's that's just one game. Um, and, and so we've got all of our goals still out in front of us. And, and the big thing is for us to get prepared for Texas Southern. It's our uh, conference opener. Um, they've already got one conference victory in hand, and, and so we're playing from behind as far as that's concerned. Uh, big, tall task in front of us, and we just got to get ready to play. Thank you very much. The floor is now open to James Spady. Remember to use the command star six to ask questions. James Spady, head coach at Alabama A&M. Coach, you got off to a mute off. Uh, on the road. Just talk about what happened next. Uh, I don't don't know, Um, you know, after watching the film, you know, we just got to continue to get better fundamentally. And I I think our football team has done that. I think um, the guys that that, that are playing for us, that are contributing for us, have done a good job of putting together what I think are good efforts. Um, You know, we just got, I think we got a little overwhelmed after the half. Um, They came out and made some adjustments, and and, um, we made some adjustments to their adjustments. And then uh, we just couldn't put it together for two more quarters. Um, we had some things kind of didn't go our way. And so, um, you know, what we got to learn is, you know, how to play through that kind of stuff. You got to play uh, no matter whether good things happen or whether bad things happen. Just play the next play. Alabama a m head coach James Spady. The floor is still hey, open for questions. Coach, this is Bud. Um, hey, Bud. Playing the – FBS team and a quality FCS as well as a quality D2 team. Would that prepare you guys for the upcoming squack schedule? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I hope it does. I, I hope the fact that we've run the gambit as far as, uh, you know, college football. We've, we've played pretty much every every level at this point. And, um, you know, I hope that does prepare us. Uh, we've, we've seen a variety of different uh, schemes, both offensively, defensively, and special teams. And uh, I hope that's going to get our guys prepared going forward. We got a long conference schedule ahead of us, and there's a lot of good football teams still left to play. And um, we're going to have to keep putting one foot in front of the other and try to get better every week. Coach, talk about this Texas Southern team that, that you'll be facing. Obviously, pick second to last in the division, and uh, right now they're 3-0. and Whoever picked them didn't watch them on film. Um, they're 3-0 and right now. They're, they're, they've got one, uh, one win in the conference, and this is a good football team. I don't know what people saw uh, to pick them next to last. Um, they fly around on defense. They've got a very solid scheme on defense. I'm, I'm scared to death that, uh, you know, we may not be able to hold up. But uh, they're really sound in their kicking game. Uh, the stuff that they do uh, on special teams is going to give other teams fits, including our team. And so we have to do a good job this week of getting our guys put in the positions that they're going to be in on Saturday. Um, they're a well-coached football team. Dale Asbury does a great job. Uh, he's got a, an assemblage of really good football coaches, and they get their kids in position. And, and I just can't see what folks saw when they pick them next to last. 
We still have three minutes left in the segment with James Spady, A and M head baseball coach. Coach Larry L, the voice of the Texas Southern Tigers. Coach, offensively, uh, what are some of the things that you uh, constantly try to work on every week to get better uh, with both of your quarterbacks? Well, um, what we always try to work on, like I said er earlier, is fundamental football. they got to understand the situations that we're in, if it's third and five, third and long, third and short, and react properly based on the fundamentals that they've been taught. Um, You know, no disrespect to Texas Southern, but it's all about whether or not we are in the right positions and we're playing the right assignments and we're using proper technique. That's what we're trying to prepare our kids for. And then you've got to take what the other team does and you put yourself in those positions before you reach Saturday. Um, but, but the big key is for us to um, just try and be a little bit better every day, uh, go out to practice and be a little bit better on Wednesday than you were on Tuesday and, and so on and so forth. Because Texas Southern is a really good football team. we got to play well to beat them. Coach, uh, defensively, what are some of the things that you see from the Tigers? I see a defense that's very active. I see those guys fly around and they gang tackle. Um, I, I, I'm scared to death about their uh, pressure package, um, you know, and I, I, I think that they've got good talent across the board uh, on their defensive front. Um, we're talking about, you know, guys that can really rush the passer. We're talking about linebackers who can run and play sideline to sideline and DB's coverage skills um, that that match anybody in our conference, which is why I'm so surprised uh, that people didn't expect them to be as good as they are because if they had asked me, I would tell them different because this is a really good defensive football team. Thank you, Coach. Coach, what are you going to do about your quarterback situation? I'm going to get out to practice on Tuesday and find out whether Jamison can go, and if he can't, we're going to make an adjustment. I don't know what that is uh, today, but uh, we'll have a plan done um, when we find out medically whether or not he is able to go, and if he is, we'll play Jamison. If if he's not, then we'll make that, make the adjustment. So no demotion in terms of his uh, the three interceptions from last week? Jamison didn't throw three interceptions. I'm sorry. We're out of time, Coach. Thank you very much for your time, and uh, we, we look forward to talking with you next Monday. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot. That's James Spady, head football coach at Alabama A&M. Again, the Bulldogs will face Texas Southern in Houston. That kicks off at 7 4 p.m. Saturday night. Next up on the call is Alabama State head football coach Reggie Barlow. Their team defeated Mississippi Valley State last Saturday. Thursday, they will play host to Arkansas at Pine Bluff. The kickoff is set for 6.30 p.m., and the game can be seen on ESPNU. Good morning, Coach Barlow. Are you with us? Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning, Coach. Thanks for joining us. If you could talk about uh, your conference victory over Mississippi Valley and preview uh, this Thursday night's contest with Pine Bluff. Yeah, we had an opportunity to play um, a home game here, open up swag play here at home, and a uh, really good atmosphere. A lot of our fans came out to support. Um, going up against Mississippi Valley, of course, we uh, have a lot of respect for Coach Comergy and uh, his teams. They're always going to play hard and be well coached and um, and and just play the game the right way. Um, we we had an opportunity to uh, do some positive things there, uh, score some points, and uh, Malcolm Sires and, uh, had a pretty good game. Khalid Thomas, we had some guys to step up and uh, rush the ball well for us, uh, which allowed us to uh, come away with the victory. Uh, obviously, there's still some things that we got to clean up uh, in all three phases to have an opportunity to uh, compete with some of these uh, really good teams in this conference, and that starts with Pine Bluff. Uh, Coach Coleman is there and has a great staff and a lot of really good athletes uh, on his team, and these guys are well coached, have great scheme, and um, so uh, they, you know, they're coming off a a bye week, and 
So we got a quick turnaround with it being Thursday, and uh, we got to get our guys ready to play. Floor is now open for Reggie Barlow, head coach at Alabama State University. Uh, coach Barlow, I see morale, Pine Bluff commercial. What advantages, uh, disadvantages do you see in a quick turnaround and given the fact that you guys have played a conference game, but UAPD has now had this extra time to prepare for you guys? Well, I, you know, I, I think uh, we, we've had a tough run here. I mean, we started out with Sam Houston State, who's an outstanding program, and then Tennessee State was another outstanding program, and then we hopped right into our swag play with Valley, and now we come into a short week. So our guys, uh, you know, we've been going at it for a while, and um, um, and you know, they they uh, we you know you get guys banged up um, because it's football. So I'd imagine it's a disadvantage now for us um, having to turn around this quick after playing really three uh, physical football games. Um, but, uh, you know, the job demanded more, and you know, that's just going to be our approach, and uh, we're going to try to get a good plan together for our guys and uh, let them go out and see can we uh, try to get a win. It seems like the victory over uh, Tennessee State really gave you guys a lot of confidence, uh, especially going into your swag slate. Yeah, I mean, our, our, obviously whenever you play against a team like Tennessee State and <clears throat> With their history and tradition, I mean, it, it gives you an opportunity to see where you stand as a team. And uh, I, I think our guys always had confidence, but uh, it's always good to, to, to get a win uh, uh, and against a team that's uh, ranked and, 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 of course, uh, you know, plays the game the right way. So, uh, But we got a good group of guys that are – uh, mature enough to understand that you know, it's one victory, it's one victory, and it's it's on to the next one. It's one snap and clear for us. So our focus and all that is uh, on Pine Bluff at this point. Yeah, and and speaking of which, uh, two years ago they came into your house on national television, took a close victory. You guys were able to still a close victory from Pine Bluff. Um, you know, has this become sort of a rivalry? And then also, uh, you know, it is. Is there a sense of maybe we really need this one because two years ago they they took a win from us on national TV? Oh, I mean that's uh, those years were those years, and uh, we we uh, we allow each game to be that game, and uh, we have a lot of respect for Coach Coleman and, and Pine Bluff team. Um, they our games have all been tight as far as I can remember, just about every year. Uh, they've been really close, and um, I imagine it'll be the same. I mean, it's uh, so much parity in our conference and, you know, a lot of good coaches, and these guys got great schemes. And so I imagine it'll be uh, very similar. Um, they got, I mean, Ben, the quarterback over there is outstanding. And, yeah. Uh, just a lot of good weapons over there. We got our work cut out for us, and uh, we, we don't have long. You know, we, we just play the game, and now we got to try to, um, get focus and get a game plan for for Pine Bluff. Yeah, and you're probably already picking up a lot of um, comparisons between Malcolm Cyrus and Isaiah Isaiah Crowell, but uh, I've seen Malcolm has had some really good games as of late. Uh, what comparisons do you see in Cyrus, or what makes Cyrus stand out as a ball player? Uh, well, I mean they're they're really two different type of back. Crowell is a big old man. Cyrus is not as big, although he's put on a lot of weight, um, uh, you know, here over this last season. But uh, Cyrus, he, I mean, he can run for power, you know, in, in between the tackles, and he's he's really good in space. I mean, he can run all the outside zone stuff. Um, he catches the ball well out of the backfield. But the one thing that uh, is really good about him is he, he plays with grit. You know, he's a, he's a feisty uh, country boy uh, that really loves playing the game and he plays it the right way, and uh, of mm-hmm. course we're hoping that he continue to have a solid season. All right, thank you. Yes, sir. Hey, Coach Barlow. Good morning. This is Charles Evans from WPRL. Hey, good morning. Uh, what, as you looked at Valley on film maybe a week ago, and of course playing the game on Saturday, what surprised you about Mississippi Valley? Something you saw in person that you might not have saw on film? Well, I, I don't. I won't say anything surprises. I, I knew um, Coach Comagy is 
you know, he he's 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 taken on a, a program that you know obviously it's had its issues, and and uh, we knew that his team would play hard and play well. Um, I guess the I knew that Stafford kid, the receiver. I, I got so much respect for him. I I love watching him play the game, and I knew he was good. But I mean, he lit us up. I think he had about 12 catches and uh, close to 200 yards or so. And good in the return game so I won't say it was surprising I, I knew he was a good player but uh, he was even better in person but um, uh, their, their valley is uh, they're going to be fine they're doing it the right way and uh, I, I, I believe in their head coach and I know he'll get things uh, turned around there real quickly. As a former receiver yourself when you look at Stafford what, what jumps off the sheet? Well, he 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 plays way bigger than what he is. Um, he you know he's he's probably about five ten. I guess if they measure him, he'd be five ten, uh, one eight. But he plays really big. Got strong hands. Uh, catches the ball in traffic well, and uh, he's a running back once uh, once the ball is in his hand. So uh, he's an exciting guy to watch, and uh, I, I I enjoyed watching him last year and. You know, for us, I I try and find those guys after the game and let them know, you know, that I thoroughly uh, uh, am a fan and enjoy, you know, watching them play. So I made sure I let them know that afterwards. Coach, finally, what's the biggest challenge? We all, you know, most of our teams go through these short weeks, these Thursday night games. What is the biggest challenge in getting your team ready in in a short time frame? Well, one, I mean, you, you know, I mentioned we we've had three really physical games uh, for us, and uh, we got we got a bunch of guys that are uh, bruised and you know got bumps, bumps and bruises. So it's the it's the moving the whole schedule up. You know, your 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 Mondays become I mean your your uh, Mondays become your Sundays. Uh, so everything is moved up, and uh, you try not to have as much physical uh, contact that first day because they they've only been off one day uh from the game so try to adjust your schedule a little bit uh where you can uh, you know kind of do a little uh, walk through jog through type stuff as well as you know your 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 normal practice stuff uh uh you know by the end of the week so it's a quick turnaround but uh the good thing about it is we get to play football quicker than we would normally play so uh that's our approach we're out of time, Coach. We appreciate you, appreciate you guys joining us this week, and uh, we look forward to talking with you next Monday. Right on. That's Alabama State head coach Reggie Barlow. Again, his team will play host to UAB Thursday night at 6.30 on ESPNU. Next up on the call is Jackson State head coach Harold Jackson. His team fell to Tennessee State. This past weekend, they will host Grambling State Saturday at 6 p.m. Good morning, Coach Jackson. Are you with us? I'm with you. Good morning. Thank you for joining us, Coach. If you could uh, talk about your game uh, against uh, Tennessee State and preview Grambling. Well, I'll tell you what. uh, Played against a very good football team, a well-coached football team, and a very talented football team. we went in that ball game, uh, you know, like I said, Tennessee State always have been a, a very good football team. And I think out of the years, I think Tennessee State have won uh, seven uh, and Jackson State have won four. So we thought we went in the ball game in pretty good shape, thought we were ready to play. And unfortunate, we went in and uh, didn't get it didn't get it going on the right track in the beginning. Uh, we have a young quarterback, and uh I'll tell you what, when they got a young quarterback going against a team like Tennessee State, they take advantage of a young quarterback, you know, so they put a lot of pressure on him. Uh, it was up in his face, and uh, he just uh, seemed like he was in the, in the first half of the game, seemed like he was on a daze, and he couldn't get him out of that funk, you know. But uh, we we just got to keep working with him because, like I said, last year, you know, he started the ball game against Tulane the first game of the season. But, you know, he's a, like I said, right now he's still a freshman he, because he didn't play last year at all, so he's still a first-year guy. And he got hurt, and he had to do a lot of rehab. And we didn't use him a whole lot in the spring, so he was still in the rehab during the spring. So, like, right now, he's probably, like, three weeks in in uh, training camp, you know. But he's coming on good, and we just got to take some of the pressure off him and then uh, hope we can uh, get him going this week uh, against Grand. Right now we got Gramlin coming up. Gramlin is, you know, one of the – 
better teams in the SWAC conference. And so uh, Coach Farr down there is doing a great job with that team. And I know they, I think they had a loss then, uh, this week. And we, we just got to be ready to play these guys this week. And so we just got to get up and play our ball game. And I think for right now, from the loss we had this past week, I think the guys realize that, they know they can't go out and just take nobody easy. They got to go play ball. And so we got a hard week ahead of us, and we just got to be prepared for it. Questions now for Harold Jackson, head coach at Jackson State. Coach Jackson, were you surprised that your running game was not able to get going? Well, I was very surprised, you know, because that's one of the things that we've been talking about because, like I said, what we got to do, we got to really get our running game going because if you're out here trying to throw the ball every down, that means that you're going to put your uh, defense back on the field, and that would weigh your defense down. So we got to make sure we put some time in that. It's just like we – uh, the first week we played, we you know in the red zone as much as we was in the red zone, and then we didn't really put any points on the board. So now we just got to make sure we work on that running game and make sure we take some pressure off the defense so they can you know get a chance to come on the field off the field and rest some. Because like I said, the way we end up this past week, we kept our defense on the field because we was going out and we was putting the ball in the air, we was throwing it too much instead of trying to get that running game. Although Tennessee kind of shut the running game down on us, so we tried to go with the next best thing, was try to throw the ball. But like I said, Tennessee got a great uh, football team, and they took a lot of stuff away from us. So we got to get that running game going so we could make sure our defense get some rest on the sideline. Coach, is there any – I know you weren't the head coach last year, but certainly some of your – any residue or any um, after effects from the – debacle last year that caused the Jackson Grambling game to be canceled? Well, no. You know, these guys, they, they understand the situation that was going down there, and it probably was in that same situation. They probably would have done the same thing. So they, they, they understand that, you know. So we haven't heard any residue or anything about that right now. You know, right now, the only thing they're doing now is trying to get ready for Grambling because they know Grambling going to come in home and ready to play ball. And we can't afford, you know, we're getting ready to go into a conference battle right now, so we got to be able to do, uh, go out and perform on the football field so we can't worry about that. We just got to be prepared when they get in here. Still taking questions for Harold Jackson, head coach at Jackson State. Get the feeling that Tennessee came in with uh, somewhat of a chip on their shoulder after falling to a swag school the previous week, Coach? Well, I'll tell you what, you know, those are the teams that you got to really watch because uh, they figured, you know, they lost a ball game that they shouldn't have lost. And you got to be up for that team because that team going to come in. They're they going to come in and then ready to play. So uh, we figured that much about that football team because they're, you know, a talented football team and they let one get away from them. Uh, not saying they taken away anything from the team that beat them because they played a real good football team. But uh, you know, like there, you know, like say you take a ball and throw it up in the in the middle of the football field, you don't know which way it's going to bounce. So uh, you know, like I said, we just hope we can be able to be on that end on the winning side when we play uh, Gremlin. Taking questions for Harold Jackson, head coach at Jackson State. Coach, what do you think is the biggest issue in not being able to get Raheem Sims going in the running game? And obviously, he's had some uh, pretty good games prior to this one. Well, you know what? We got to look at what's happening up front, and uh, we just got to get our scheme together up front and make sure they're doing what they're supposed to be uh, that offensive line, you know. We have, you know, like there's a lot of problem with that offensive line because, like I said, that's always have been my pet peeve since I've been here with the offensive line and the defensive line. We got to make sure we get that 
put together because, like I said, right now, I just don't feel like I have the depth at those those two positions, and that's been the problem. So we just got to find a way to try to get uh, Joaquin Sims uh, going because, like I said, he come up to me every week and say, Coach, I'm going to get 150 yards, and you know, like that. And so, But he's feel, you know, kind of disappointed because he hadn't been able to do it. But eventually he get he get this uh, offensive line going and get it unleashed and so we can get some open up some holes so we can get – get him, uh, you know, his 100 yards or whatever he's talking about doing. But I feel good about him. He's a great running back, and we just got to make sure we get our part for the offensive line taken care of so he can be able to run. What do you expect out of this Grambling team that you'll see Saturday? Well, i tell you what, they're going to come in here fired up. And uh, we know Grambling always have gave Jackson State a – you know, run for the money. They, you know, they're a very good football team. They got a very good coaching staff there, so they're gonna be prepared. So we just got to be ready to go. I know they're gonna come in here because last year they supported play Jackson State here for homecoming, and they didn't come and play. So they're gonna be ready to play. So we just got to make sure our kids are ready to go and uh, be able to take on the challenge. Do we have any more questions for Harold Jackson, head coach at Jackson State? Thank you, Coach. We appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we look forward to talking with you next week. Thank you. That's Tara Jackson, head football coach at Jackson State. And, again, his team falling to Tennessee State this past weekend by a score of 35-7. to They now have a record of 2-1, and one, and they will play host to Grambling State for a game that is set to kick off at 6 p.m. Next up, we will go to Arkansas at Pine Bluff. Head coach Monty Coleman, Pine Bluff, had the previous week off. This week again, they'll travel to Montgomery and face Alabama State. 6.30 kickoff, ESPNU will televise the contest. Good morning, Coach Coleman. Are you with us? Uh, yes, I am. Good morning. Good morning, Coach. Thanks for joining us. Uh, let's talk about some of the things you guys went over during your bye week and uh, – Preview the Hornets, if you will. Well, last week was a, a good week for us. Preferably don't like a bye week that quite, quite that early. Uh, but because we did get it, we were able to uh, practice all last week. I did give the guys a couple of days off during the weekend. Um, came back in yesterday and practice. Of course, we'll practice today and get on the road uh, late tomorrow or early Wednesday morning. Head to Alabama State in Montgomery. But I was able to um, to practice the guys and just work on some of the things that we do to shoe up some of the assignments. And uh, one of the things. Thank you very much, Coach. The uh, floor is now open for Arkansas Pine Bluff head coach, Monty Coleman. Can you hear me? I see at the uh, uh, commercial. Um how intense do you think Thursday's game will be? I, I think it's going to be very intense, I see. Uh, this will be our first conference game. It'll be State's second game, conference game. They played Valley, of course, this past weekend, and I was able to walk away with that victory. So I think it's going to be very intense. Uh, a couple, two years ago in 2012, we came there, and we were able to walk out with a victory, which we were very fortunate on a Thursday night. So I think the intensity is going to be there uh, based on history and also just the uh, where we are right now as far as uh, our conference uh, component. Yeah. Do you remind you guys – I'm sorry. Uh, do, you, do you remind you guys uh, quite a bit about two years ago? Because cause, uh, I, I saw that game in person, and uh, I thought that, that was uh, one of your signature wins right there for the regular season. Not, not really. We, we don't talk about that game. That game is behind us. Uh, a lot of the players that was on their team was no longer there. A lot of the players that was on our team is no longer here. So you know you refer to it, but you don't you don't hype on it. Uh, the thing that we've got to do is we've got to be ready to play the 2014 Alabama State team 
and uh, with our players that we have and, and try to come out victorious in a hostile crowd there in Montgomery. Right. Uh, Alabama State has a really good uh, rushing game. And uh, was, was that a point of focus during this, uh, I guess, alter practice schedule for you guys? No, not, not necessarily just their run game. They're very, they're very well coached, first of all, uh, all across the board, all three phases, offense, defense, and special teams. Uh, our emphasis is, is, is playing a sound football game, playing a physical football game. And, you know, uh, of course, we've got to stop the run. That's one of the things that we our goals every week is to stop our opponent's running game. And uh, so it's no different with them, but uh, that's not a main focus uh, for this ball game. That's the focus that we have for every ball game. Right. Still taking questions for Monty Coleman, head football coach at Arkansas at Pine Bluff. Coach, I heard you mention that you, you, you guys don't talk much about the last time the two teams met in Montgomery in 2012, but you, you brought a quarterback there and Benjamin Anderson that's now a senior for you. How much um, how much did you witness him grow up that night? He, he grew up quite a bit for us that night, uh, and I've watched Ben grow through the years that he's been here. Uh, he's matured a little bit every year, and I thought that was one of the pivotal games for him as far as his maturity for that year. 2012 uh, to help take us on to the SWAC championship. So uh, I've watched Ben grow. Uh, he's continually, continually growing, and uh, we're hoping that he can use some of that same magic that happened in 12 uh, this coming Thursday night. Hey, Coach, uh, I know at least the last two or three times you guys played on national television, uh, you guys uh, have not lost, and I'm not counting the ESPN3 games. I'm counting, like, on traditional television, uh, is it something where you guys just, once you know you're going to play on TV, you guys just tend to really thrive on that? No, I see. Uh, we, we, it, it's nothing that we, you know, um, talk to the kids about. Um, it, it, it's another game for us. It doesn't matter if it's on ESPN or if it's on Thursday night or if it's on Saturday afternoon. Or Saturday evening, it, it's another game for us, and that's how we try to approach it. Um, so there's not a lot of emphasis saying that, you know, it's a national televised game and we've got to get up for it. Uh, I would like for our team to get up for every game, regardless of, you know, where, where's the venue or who we're playing or any of that. I, I want us to play well each and every week. Right. Coach, how do you plan for a guy like Malcolm Sires, that tailback at Alabama State? Well, you know, they, they, they've been blessed with great running backs at Crowell. Uh, the last few years we've played against him. Um, this young man, Mr. Malcolm, is running the football very well. Has great speed, good balance. Uh, watching him run the football, he, he's enjoying himself. So the thing that we have to do is we just got to tackle. Uh, we've got to approach him like we approach every game. And we've got to make sure that we sure tackle him because he's uh, Alabama State has been blessed with great running backs, and this is another one. You guys put an emphasis on trying to get off to a great start early on, and, and especially in games like this on the road. Oh, we we have to, we we have to get off to a fast start. And we've got to play for 60 minutes. So that's been kind of the buzzword around here is we've got to finish. We've got to play all 60 minutes. And we definitely have to fast start. Uh, this, this is a huge game for us. It, 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 they, they've got one victory in the SWAC. We don't have this uh, victory yet. This is our first uh, uh, conference opener. And uh, it's very important to us that we win this game uh, to stay in race with everybody else. So. Uh, we've got to get off to a fast start, and we've got to play 60 minutes and finish. Has this weekend, has this uh, bye week just been so much easier uh, for you guys with the uh, victory, coming off that victory? 
it, it, it is, but anytime you have a bye week, there are certain things that you want to work on. So either coming off of victory or coming off of a loss, you, you want to work on those. But it's, it's a lot more pleasurable. It's a lot more practice atmosphere when you do come off of a victory opposed to coming off of a loss. So the, the, the outcome is, you know, it's a work week for you. And um, regardless win or lose, you're going you're gonna to put the work in to analyze yourself or evaluate yourself to uh, make sure that you can stop making some of the mistakes that you're making and uh, hopefully get on, on, on track as a team. And that's what this bye week is for, was for us. Okay. We have about three minutes left in the segment with Monty Coleman, head coach at Arkansas Pine Bluff. Coach, if you were able to watch film on, on Mississippi Valley, and, and if so, did you see anything – uh, any tendency that, that would lead to some confidence for you guys of being able to make plays? Actually, the, the two games I've really been concentrating on were their first two games, uh, the Sam Houston and the Tennessee State. I will watch after we get off this conference call. After I get off the conference call, go and start watching some of the Valley. Um, but uh, I have not seen their, their game against Valley as of yet. I will uh, start watching that this morning. Do you have any more questions for Arkansas Pine Bluff head coach Monty Coleman? Coach, thank you very much for your time. We look forward to talking with you next Monday. I look forward to it also. Thank you. Thank you. It's head coach Arkansas and Pine Bluff, Monty Coleman, his team again with a bye week this past week. And they will travel to Montgomery to face Alabama State. The kickoff is set for 630 the game can be seen on ESPNU. Next up on the call, we go to Grambling State. And Broderick Thobbs, the head coach there, his team was defeated by Bethune-Cookman this past Saturday. Jack, uh, excuse me, Grambling State will travel to Jackson State this Saturday. Kick off the set for 6 p.m. Good morning, Coach Thobbs. Are you with us? Hi. How are you doing this morning? Doing well, Coach. Thank you for asking. If you could talk about um, your, your battle with Bethune and preview Grambling State. Uh, well, I tell you, Bethune-Cookman is a, a heck of a program, which we all know, uh, number one team in black college football, uh, very, very good athletes and also well coached. Uh, they did a great job uh, against us. Uh, our kids, we thought, played well. Um, we, we made some mistakes that really, really kind of hurt us at certain uh, times, at key moments in the ball game uh, right there before halftime. Uh, we turned the ball over, and they, and they got the ball on the short field and were able to get points out of it. Uh, and then later on in the fourth quarter, when we had an opportunity to win the ball game, I thought Bethune-Cookman did a better job of, of, of basically snatching the game from us. Um, that's something that, uh, that we're learning around here is, is how to finish ball games and, uh, and how to play extremely hard for 60 minutes. Uh, but I'm pleased with our kids uh, because they played extremely hard. Uh, but, of course, you know, we want to win a football game. Questions now for Grambling State head football coach Broderick Fobbs. Hey, Coach Fobbs, good morning. How you doing? Good morning. How are you? Good. This is uh, Charles Edmond uh, with WPRL. Coach, just talk about this long road strip, stretch that you've had to start this season. I know it's been a grind the early part of the year. Yeah, it's it's pretty tough, you know, but that's uh, that's something that we talk about all the time. You know, uh, uh, we want to we wanna build it and, and set an environment around here and a culture around here where it doesn't matter uh, where we play the game. If we're on the road or if we're at home, or uh, whatever time we plan to play, you know, we want to show up and play extremely hard and play Gremlin Tiger football. 
Talk about the key in finishing because you were minutes away from winning that game the other day. Yeah, it's um, you know you know it's it's kind of like um, you know doing something for the first time. You know when you when you when you haven't done it in a while and you haven't been as successful as as, as need be. Um, you know um, it's it's new for you finishing a game and with a program like Bethune Cookman, uh, you know they they understand and they've been in those tough battles uh, and that's what makes them the number one team. You know in black college football. Uh, so that's something that we're trying to do. You know, we're we're at the door and we're knocking on the door. Uh, but you know, it comes a point in time where you got to start kicking the door in, and uh, and that's something that our kids are are understanding. Uh, I'm very excited about our kids. Um, they 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 care a lot about uh, about playing this game, and they're really really doing a great job for us. So we just got to go back to the drawing board and uh, do some things a little bit better, tie up some loose ends and some and some. Uh, and some areas, and, uh, and and put a better performance out on Saturday. You got a short trip coming up. Uh, just just talk about it in your mind, the uh, the Grambling Jackson rivalry, what it meant to you, and as as you get ready, I'm sure that's probably going to be a big message to your team going forward. Just the history and tradition of those two programs. Well, I tell you, you know, Jackson State has always been a program that I've always admired. Uh, they have a great fan base. They travel well and. And they show up for any contest that uh, Jackson State plays. So, uh, so that's that's something that that I always will remember, you know, from playing against Jackson State. And then they have great athletes. You know, Mississippi, the state of Mississippi puts out great talent every year that goes on to various universities that are very very successful. And uh, and Jackson is no different. You know, they have several uh, student athletes that are great athletes and great football players. And uh, we're just excited about the opportunity to play again uh, and to go over to Jackson State and uh, and see where we are. Speaking of where you are, talk about where you are at the quarterback position uh, with DJ and, and the other quarterback in there. Talk about that battle and, and who stepped up there. Uh, well, Stephen Johnson, you know, played uh, played uh, all of the game last week, and uh, he's played rather well for us. Uh, he's done a great job of. Uh, of really uh, reading the defense and putting the ball where it needs to be and allowing the playmakers to make plays. Uh, so we're going to continue to go with Steven. Um, I think DJ has done a good job of, of really supporting Steven in, in, uh, in the areas well needed. So uh, we're excited about the three quarterbacks we do have, but Steven is going to get to go. Hey, Coach, I see Morell at the Pine Bluff commercial. Uh, what positives have you seen out of your team? Uh, I mean, because, again, you guys were six minutes away from knocking off the number one black college team. Uh, well, the thing that the positives is is our kids play extremely hard. And uh, and for three weeks, you know, they played extremely hard. And we talk about all the time not focusing on winning. You know, so many times I think, you know, uh, the mistake made is, you know, everyone looks at the scoreboard and they play according to what the scoreboard says. Uh, we're trying to build a culture around here that just plays hard, extremely hard all of the time. And it doesn't matter if we're up by 30 or if we're down by 30 or whatever. Uh, we want to play the game the same way, the right way. Uh, so that's something that we're instilling in our kids, and, and we're, we're seeing that, you know, come to pass. You know, our kids are, are really understanding that. They have to play regardless. So uh, it's going to be a, a tough task, you know, to go over here to Jackson and, uh, and play over here in, in Jackson, Mississippi, and, uh, we're just looking forward to it. Coach, after the game Saturday, what what are you looking to see um, at practice this week? In practice this week? Yes. Uh, well, basically, it's it's like any other week. You know, uh, uh, we do things the same way regardless. You know, uh, we believe in scratching where it itches, things that we didn't do well. Uh, we focus, we pinpoint those things and focus on those things, and then things that we do well, we fine-tune. Uh, so we just want to continue to uh, to work in practice and, and do the things the right way and uh, and make sure we're blocking, tackling, and, and catching and doing all the things that it takes in order to win a football game. Coach Rosenblatt from the Clarion Ledger, what, I don't know if you've had time to study Jackson State yet, but what do you expect from JSU when you play them on Saturday? What are some, I guess, concerns or things that you believe you have to hone in on on Saturday? Well, Jackson, uh, I expect Jackson to be what they've always been, a tough, you know, physical program. Uh, I think Coach Jackson, I've known him for a number of years, and 
He's, he's a heck of a football coach. Um, I remember playing against him when he was at University of Baylor. and um, I mean, just a heck of a football coach, and he's assembled a great staff. So uh, I know we're going to get a tough football team, a, a great program uh, that has had a, a history of, of, of success. Uh, so it's going to be it's going to be a good uh, a good opportunity to see where we are and and we just we just love competing and and our kids love competing and uh, and it allows us to see where we are as a program. Still taking questions for Broderick Fobbs, head coach at Grambling State. Coach, how do you think your team is going to do against I guess, a run-and-shoot offense like Coach Timmy Chang's? Is that something you have, you're going to plan on talking about with the team this week? Well, I mean, that's something that we, you know, of course we got to talk about it because we're getting ready to face it, you know. So, um, you know, I know that that type of offense has always been uh, the type that's very successful, but what a lot of people don't realize is, is, you know, a lot of people think that it's a lot more pass. It's a balanced offense, you know. It's, it allows it allows you to put some people in some spots to to make plays. So uh, so we're we we understand you know what we're facing and uh, and we and we're gonna make sure that uh, that we put a good plan together uh, to make sure that we're ready to play and that our kids understand. Coach, how big was that third quarter for you, scoring 17 points? And I guess you got to—you guys kind of felt like you were in a position to win it at that point. Yeah, um, you know, I thought the you know the third quarter was good, and it was good to to be on the other end, you know, where where you have an explosive quarter as opposed to your opponents having an explosive quarter. Um, you know, we were excited about it, you know, uh, but you know, at the end of the day, you know, the football contest is 60 minutes, and and we have to we have to make sure that we we do a good job of playing for an entire football game. We can't have those those five to ten plays in there that really hurts us and costs us, and and uh, that's something that's to focus for this week. Do we have any more questions for Broderick Fox, head coach at Grambling State? Coach Fox, thank you very much for your time, and we will talk to you next Monday. Thank you so much. Roderick Fox, head coach at Grambling State again. His team defeated by Bethune this past weekend. They'll play at Jackson State. Kickoff is set for us. Next up on the call, we will talk things over with Alcorn State head coach Jay. Alcorn failed to, or excuse me, defeated Louisiana College this past Saturday. And they are at Mississippi Valley in Itabina this weekend. Saturday, the kickoff is set for 4 p.m. Good morning, Coach Hobson. Are you with us? Good morning, yes. Thanks for joining us, Coach. We could talk about your victory over Louisiana College and uh, preview your in-state rival with Mississippi Valley State this Saturday. Well, we um, we started off slow last Saturday. Had uh, uh, had a turnover that led to an interception return for a touchdown and got down early. Uh, really, uh, the first half, I thought, of the first – Quarter and a half was pretty sloppy, but uh, we know we did find a way to um, come back. And uh, I thought the second half we uh, were much better in playing assignment football. But uh, certainly, uh, uh, you know, again, I was pretty pleased with the second half. The first half, I, I really wasn't. But uh, we got away with the win and get ready for conference play. All right, and the floor is now open for Alcorn State head coach Jay Hobson. Three swag schools right there in the state, Coach. Uh, anytime they get together, it, it, it's always something that's a battle. I'm sure you expect nothing different, uh, anything different this this coming Saturday with Valley. No question. It'll it'll be a hard fought ball game, and it always is. Uh, you know, they they um, got a bunch of playmakers, and the Stafford kid, Julian Stafford, has been a great player in this conference. Avery Boykin, DB. So they, they've, uh, you know, we expect nothing but a uh, full court game, and uh, again, like I said, it's a natural rival, and so it'll be a hard fought game.
talking things over with Alcorn State head coach Jay Hobson. Please use the command star six to unmute your phone for questions. Coach, this is Rod from the Clarion Ledger. Hey, Rod. Um, hey, Coach. Um, following the loss against Southern Miss, were you pleased with the with the I guess the performance that you saw from your team um, this past this past Saturday? You know, Roz, I, I thought I thought that first quarter we were asleep. You know, what I'm saying I thought we got better. I was really happy with the second half. I, I thought, and it was probably, um, you know, it might have been a good game to have looking back because I think maybe you know that that Southern Miss was a t- tough loss for us. You know, it really was, and in, in more ways than one. So I think that uh, I think maybe you know it's, it's no excuse, but maybe the, you just have to. They were a little bit. Um, lingering on that game you don't know that but uh certainly it, it took us a while to get warmed up uh saturday and uh and that's something we can't do the remainder of the week remainder of the season mm-hmm. it seems slow starts um just coming out the first half a little bit of a slow start um for you guys just in the first couple of games is that what you're seeing on on your end well, I thought, you know, the the first game, of course, I thought we got out kind of fast. I thought uh I think that's true in the Southern Miss and the last game. Um, you know, the Southern Miss, I thought we we kind of got moving early at Southern Miss. You know, we went down about the 6-yard line and fumbled and then we had the long touchdown that uh was negated, but but you know, there were some things there that we I thought we were doing pretty good in the first half. We just we just kept uh getting pushed back, and then, uh, you know, I thought we were much better in the second half, but I do agree with you. I think the second half at Southern Miss, we were better, and I think the second half this week, we were better. Mm-hmm. Coming back against um, Bart Novon. Excuse me, Ross. I was going to say, um, you're playing – you're f- f- quite familiar with Coach Kamiji and his schemes um, mm-hmm. just from having played in that Jackson State and now he's at Mississippi Valley. Does that kind of help you, I guess, uh, knowing what to expect? Um, well, I think, both, I, right, I think oh, Coach Kamiji does a great job, uh, always has. And uh, I think both sides will be pretty familiar with both sides. You know, so I don't think it will be really an advantage one way or the other. I think they're very familiar with us and we're very familiar with them. So I think it's uh, – you know, I think there's a, uh, you know, I, th- I think that's kind of a mutual deal. Mm-hmm. Coach, you're able to get Jordan Payne going. Uh, you're tight end, 79 right. yards, got in, the, got in the end zone twice. Uh, talk about his play this weekend. Jordan, and he made a big catch, too, on the Hail Mary, you know. And that was kind of an interesting deal because, we challenged him before the Hail Mary, and he went up and got it. So I was pleased to see that. But uh, Jordan made some big plays, and he, he has made a, a bunch of big plays here over the last three years. But, um, you know, he uh, I thought he uh, really stepped up. I thought, you know, he really had a good game. I thought he bounced back from last week, and I was really proud to see that. Do you have any more questions for Jay Hobson? The floor is still open. Still have about five minutes left in his segment. Coach, originally a defensive-minded guy. Of course, you're you're both sides of the ball-minded guy now. I remember hearing you say that. Correct. That's, that's uh, a very true statement. Talk about uh, Julian Stafford, though. Uh, watching this this kid play at wideout, he is just talented. You know, uh, he he's he's like I said, he's been a playmaker ever since he's been there. Uh, he's a big play threat, um, fluid, smooth. You know, uh, just uh, you know, he, all his accolades are well deserved, and uh, you know, he, he uh, he's he, he's took it to the house on us before. So I mean, we we got to be ready for him. Still taking questions for Jay Hobson, head coach at Alcorn State. Again, use the command star six to unmute your phone. Coach, GKL Smith. 
Hey, Gail. What's going on, fellas? Um, talk about the production of the defensive line. You know, y'all recorded six sacks over the weekend, and uh, the group, the depth that's you know continuously building at that position. Just talk about how they're producing uh, since the beginning of the season. Jaquel, I was I was uh, I was really pleased to see that. I thought that, I think they're they're playing really. They're getting better every week, which is really pleasing. They but a lot of those guys are young guys, which is good. You know, we had a couple of freshmen get on some sacks, so hopefully uh, we can continue that growth. You know, because that is a position that uh, you know what I'm saying we're we're, we're trying to uh, get as deep as we can, and I think we're getting deep. And I've really been pleased with some of the young guys up front. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Gail. Uh, through three games now, Coach, talk about uh, your, your quarterback, John Gibbs Jr., and his his progress. John, I think um, I think uh, you know, I really, I thought the first game he played really well, and I really thought he made some big plays against Southern Miss. Uh, uh, you know, he, he had some drops. He, he really, I thought, played well against Southern Miss. He had quite a few balls that were dropped that he put in there. Uh, this I think this last game uh, was probably John's worst game of the season. You know, uh, I thought, uh, you know what I'm saying, that's something we talked about. He still played pretty good. I think he graded at about 89, 90. But, but uh, you know, John's a guy that uh, he's our leader, and we look to him uh, uh, to make plays and make the correct decisions for us. So, uh, you know what I'm saying, I'm, I'm looking forward to him bouncing back this week and, and, and having a big week. Coach, I wanted to ask quickly about your running backs. It seems like you have uh, two in Darren and Anthony, um, and it seems like they've kind of split the carries among each other. Um, who do you, I guess, where are you guys in that situation, and who do you expect to carry the load for the rest of the season? Rods, it's kind of like I said at the beginning, you know, really we're kind of a running back by committee football team. We're blessed to have, uh, I think we have three physical running backs that, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying, are very talented and, and uh, physical young men. So, I mean, like I said, and, and we will uh, we'll utilize all three of them, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, if, like I said, if one guy gets hot, you know, I thought Rags had a real good game against uh, uh, Southern Miss. You know, he broke, he had, a, he had a lot of yards. He also broke the one 70 yard or 60 yarder that got called back. And then, um, you know, this week I thought Train Anthony Williams did a great job. I thought he played really well. So, uh, you know, I mean, it's it's really kind of whoever's got the hot hand. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Okay. Coach, we are out of time. We appreciate you taking questions for us uh, today, and we look forward to talking with you on next Monday. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot. That's Jay, football coach at Alcorn State. Again, his team defeating Louisiana College this past Saturday. Uh, they'll head to Itabina, Mississippi, for a battle with Mississippi Valley State Saturday at 4 p.m. Next up on the call, we go to Itabina, Mississippi, and start, talk things over with Rick Kamaji, head football coach at Mississippi Valley State. His team fell on a road to Alabama State, and again, they will host Alcorn at 4 p.m., Good morning, Coach Kamaji. Are you with us? Please remember to use the command star six to unmute your phone. Okay, while we're waiting for Mississippi Valley State head coach Rick Kamaji, for those of you that recently joined, we'll revisit the Southwestern Athletic Conference Football Players of the Week. Offensively, it was Julian Stafford from Mississippi Valley State, caught 12 balls for 222 yards and a touchdown, also had 32 kickoff return yards. Defensively, it went to Alabama State linebacker Courtney Berry. Courtney Berry had seven tackles on the day. Had one and a half tackle for a loss. Also had a fumble recovery return for a touchdown. Now has 32 tackles on the season through three games. The newcomer of the week goes to Mississippi Valley State's Duntrenell Scott. He's a Memphis transfer. He completed 12 of 20 passes for 147 yards in the loss at uh, Alabama State. The specialist of the week goes to Khalid Thomas from Alabama State, set a career high and season high in punt return yardage, 
gaining 132 yards on five returns. He averaged 26.4 yards per return and had a long of 43. Also had a career high in rushing with 98 yards on nine carries, averaging 10.9 yards per rush. Scored on an eight-yard touchdown run in the fourth quarter and finished the game with 230 all-purpose yards, averaging 16.4 yards every time he touched the ball or Mississippi against Mississippi Valley. Again, that's Alabama State's Khalid Thomas Specialist of the Week. Do we now have Coach Comedy on? Okay, we're still awaiting Mississippi Valley State Head Coach Rick Comedy to join the call. And while doing so, we will run down the week three scores and also preview the schedule for week four for those of you that are recently joined the call. Week three scores, Alcorn State again defeated Louisiana College 52-10. to It was UAB over Alabama A&M 41-14 this past Saturday. Bethune-Cookman College defeated Grambling State 36-23. to It was Texas Southern 30 and Central State 16 this past weekend. Alabama State defeated Mississippi Valley State 47 to 22. It was Tennessee State 35, Jackson State 7, McNeese State 48, Prairie View A&M 16, Northwestern State 51, and it was Southern University 27. Taking a look at week four uh, slate of games. Again, no team has a bye week here in week four. It all starts Thursday night as Alabama State host, plays host to UAPB. It's Arkansas at Pine Bluff, 630 on ESPN. Saturday games. Alcorn State is at Mississippi Valley State for a 4 p.m. kickoff. And Southern University We'll travel to Prairie View for a 6 p.m. kickoff, and I think we have Coach Comedy that just joined us. Good morning, Coach. Are you with us? Okay, we're still waiting, Coach Comedy. Uh, other games, Grambling State is at Jackson State this coming Saturday in Jackson, Mississippi. The game is set for 6 p.m. It is the first conference game for Grambling State. Alabama A&M and Texas Southern will square off in Houston. First conference game of the season for Alabama A&M as they have yet to play a game at home as well. Let's see, do we have Coach Comedy with us now? Yes. Good morning, Coach Comedy. Yeah, good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, if you could talk about uh, – Talk about the game at Alabama State this past weekend and uh, preview your battle with Alcorn. Well, we played a real fine football team. Those guys were ready to play, and they came out. And I thought we came out ready to play as well. You know, it was a good game early, and um, it did, you know they just um, it got out of hand. We made some mistakes, and we got it got out of hand. They played well. They capitalized on our mistakes. The special teams were you know doing a, they did a fine job. Uh, punt returner and different things of that nature. And, uh, you know, they played good football, good solid football. I thought we got better, um, you know, this week. Um, you know, um, even though the score was doesn't is not indicative of our play, but as we watch film, I can see the improvements in the team. And I'm really pleased on the, on, on the progress that we've made thus far. There's going to be some time. We just got to be patient and keep the kids patient and keep them hungry for football. And I think down the road, you know, we'll, you know we'll we'll show we'll show out better than what we've showed out in the in the past couple games. Um, hitting on Alcorn, you know they're a tough football team. Coach has a does a fantastic job, and you know he's going to have those guys ready to play. It's an in-state game. Um, you know Alcorn's not that far from uh, you know two campuses are not that far from each other, and um, you know I know the kids are excited. You know I'm happy about at least being at home playing against them, and uh, but I know they're going to come in trying to keep their record uh, uh, solid in what they're doing in the East, and, you know, I'm hoping to do the same, and I'm looking for an exciting game. Uh, we just got to get better and better as we go along each week and, and uh, so that we can comp- try to at least compete and stay in this thing. Florida State, uh, 
floor is now open for Rick Cummins, your head coach at Mississippi Valley State. Coach Cummins, good morning. How you doing? Good morning to you. This is Charles Eppin from WPRL. How you doing, Charles? Doing pretty good. Coach, talk about the biggest improvements uh, the last couple of weeks, especially last week against Bama State. You were down, but you were able to put some points on the board in the second half. Yeah, you know, that's an improvement there in itself. You know, I thought we regressed a little bit in our punt cover game, and we got to look at that issue there because, you know, we played, you know, we, you know, a lot, you know, earlier we couldn't, you know, they kept us in, you know, pinned down and, you know, in their area or their or the punt returner would bring it out past the plus 50 and, you know, and defense had their back to the wall. The game was 16 to 8 going real well. You know, I had a lot of confidence even when it went up the second time. I, I still felt that we could um, make a push in the ball game and, and um, we changed quarterbacks and put that Ivy in it. That struck two touchdowns, or, you know, real quick on them and, you know, I'm thinking, well, okay, well, we get back in this game when we get 22. You know, it wasn't down yet, but um, they're, you know, they came back with a good offensive spurge and, you know, uh, you know, quickly and um, hit us for some touchdowns and, you know, it kind of took us out of the ball game. But I felt that, you know, there was a, you know, a nice little nip and tug in there where I wanted the game to be, and um, but yet and still, um, it just didn't happen for us. You know, we took turns making mistakes and they were playing extremely well and, you know, and that, you know, and and just shot on bias. You know, they're a good team. Uh, you know, Coach does a um, fantastic job. And I just think that, you know, we just got to reach that the level of some of the teams that are playing. And I think as we go along and play, we'll get better and better as we start, you know, challenging folks as, you know, and seeing the level of football that they play. I don't think that guys are used to losing. I mean, even though if you want to look at the past, but I think that's been erased. And uh, they want to win with a pass. And that's exactly where I want them to be you know, win with a passion. And so once we get there and arrive there and a few good things happen for us, the ball bounce our way, I think we'll be fine, you know. So, you know, I think a lot of those things mixed up into your question that you asked. I think uh, we're coming along, but we're just not there yet. we still got to grow. we got to go back in the oven and, you know, bake a little longer. But yet and still, I think once we come out, I think we'll have a fine, you know, um, a fine brand to look at. Has Ivy emerged as your quarterback at this point, considering what he did the at other day? At this point, you know, I would think so. You know, he's he coming. He's done a, a couple good things for us and, you know, and gave us some emotion, some adrenaline, some things to flow on. And we got to go with him because he's doing that. And, and uh, we can't just count him out. You know, we got a couple guys that we like. But I think right now that he's got to be our guy that we put out there first, you know, to help us compete and stay in the ball game. What do you, I know it's early in the week, Coach, but what do you, what do you see in all corners, junior quarterback, a solid running game? What what do you see in the break? They're a solid football team all the way around. Coach got a solid team down there, defense and offense. You know, they're very solid. You know, he's going to he's gonna have a solid defense. He's a defensive type guy, but his offense is doing some good things for him and putting a lot of points on the board. His defense is, you know, complimenting them very well. The special teams are doing well. So, you know, he's put together a real fine club. It took him a while you know, to move forward, but he's finally built a program and that hopefully that can be established, and that's what I'm trying to do here. And, um, you know, hopefully I can get to the level where they are and, and keep moving forward. We're out of time, Coach. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll look forward to talking with you next week. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Take care. Rick Thomas, your head coach at Mississippi Valley State, his team. Uh, we'll host uh, All Corn State at 4 p. Next up on the call, we go to A and M. Team defeated was defeated by McNeese State, and they will host Southern University at 6 p.m. He is head coach Heish Northern from Prairie View A and M. Good morning, coach. Are you with us? Good morning, yes, sir. Coach, if you will. Uh, Talk about your uh, your game with McNeese the, the State and uh, preview Southern this this coming weekend. All right. First of all, let me say that was not my office music that you guys heard in the background. But uh, you know, we went down to McNeese, uh, didn't get off to, get didn't get off to a great start. Uh, but you know, one thing, uh, you know, my guys kept fighting, and uh, and I, and I told my guys I was proud of them for that effort because we did make a run. 
uh, had a chance to get it down to 14 points, and then we gave up a couple of late scores. Um, but at, but at the end of the day, I thought we played hard. We didn't play smart uh, all the times, uh, and sometimes we didn't play as physical as I thought we needed to. Um, but but guys kept fighting, and uh, and you know that's one of the things as a coach you can you know sort of hang your hat on as long as the guys fight for you. Uh, but we still got to clean up some things. Uh, you know some guys didn't play up to the level. Uh, that I expected uh, before we went into the ball game. I talked about this is what we have to do in order to win. You know, limit the rush, uh, be able to run the ball, uh, not let their defense or special teams uh, score, and uh, limit our penalties. And unfortunately for us, you know, early in the ball game, uh, you know, they sent a corner black, uh, cornerback blitz, uh, force a turnover, scoop and score. Uh, and then we had a few penalties that aided uh, some of their drives and uh, thwarted some of ours. So, you know, we're going to get back at the drawing board. Uh, got a, a big game coming up this weekend. It's going to mean a lot towards, uh, you know, how the rest of the season plays out. I mean, the only thing we talked to our guys about is winning one in a row. And, uh, you know, it, it's going to be, you know, pretty much for us it's going to be our first homecoming game because, you know, we know that, you know, the, the Southern fans like to travel a lot. And, you know, I think Houston may be their largest or second largest alumni base. And, and we look forward to having a lot of Prairie View fans in the stands and, and winning a football game this weekend. Floor is now open for Heist Northern, head football coach at Prairie View a &M. Good morning, Coach. This is Mike Prince with the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Yes, sir. Hey, um, with this being a, a big event going on the local campus and being it uh, for the most part, for the last few years, you guys have been traveling for most of your home games. Uh, what preparations are you are getting you guys mentally prepared for? Because this will be addition, like the first of two homecomings for this year. Yeah, the older guys know what I'm referring to in, in terms of, you know, the crowd that Southern brings, uh, whether we played them in Baton Rouge or in Shreveport. Uh, I don't think anybody was here the last time we played them in Houston. Uh, at one of the high school stadiums, but my younger guys, they have no reference to it, uh, but some of the older guys do, so we talk about that. We talk about some of the distractions uh, that are going to come our way in terms of the older guys that used to play here that are coming back, uh, the southern uh, people that will be here and, and just focusing on the task at hand. You know, even myself, you know, I have to, you know, I've had, you know, I don't know how many phone calls from my relatives asking to buy 15 or 20 tickets or do I have tickets. So it, that's something that I have to compartmentalize as well. But the biggest thing is getting the guys to understand is it a big game? Yes. Um, but it, it's, you have to focus on what you have to do and what you can control. Don't worry about if the weather's going to be good. Don't worry about if, you know, they have a whole lot of fans and, you know, we have a few. Uh, but, you know, like I say, we're going to control what we can control. All right. Another thing, Coach, um, how or or you internalize this, you hit on it a little bit with you being an alumni of Southern. I know you pay for the where the paycheck is. But it's got to be an exciting event for you as well to have this game so close and personal from your behalf. Well, I, I try to treat it like just another game. Uh, probably when I was younger, I may have looked at it differently. Uh, but at the end of the day, it, it is another game. Yes, yeah, the school that I went to, uh, the school that I played at, uh, graduated from, met my wife, all that kind of good stuff. But at the end of the day, I just want to win a football game for Prairie View. Take, I wouldn't care who we were playing. If it's the Houston Texans or the Baton Rouge Bandits, I want to win a football game for these young men that go out there and bust their butts for Prairie View and University. Uh, you know, what happens with the Southern fans, or, you know, even my family that are Southern fans, whether they get in the game or not, is not a concern of mine. I just want to win a football game for Prairie View. All right. With that being said, Coach, what are going to be some of your uh, keys for success and how you assess the Jaguars? It's the same. You know, people want to say coaches talk, but, you know, be able to run the ball, stop the run, uh, be fundamentally sound in the kicking game. That That's winning football. Tackle well, block well. That's, uh, that's winning. Just go out there and fight and scrap because we know one thing. You know, we got a good reference point of what happens when you don't put away. If you look at the game that we played last year, and we know those are guys going to play until it's 0, zero, zero where there's, you know, double or triple overtime. They're going to keep playing. So uh, we have to keep playing and match their intensity and don't turn over the football. Thanks, Coach. Yes, sir. We got time left to talk things over with Heist Northern, head coach at Prairie View A&M. 
Hey, Coach Northern, good morning. Yes, sir. This is Charles Eppin from WPRL. How you doing? I'm doing fine. How yourself? Pretty good. Coach, just talk about the, the, the nostalgia, and I know you got a game to get ready for, but for Southern to come come to campus, when was the last time that happened? Uh, as, as far as you know, I was talking about that with somebody just the other day, uh, and just the, the whole nostalgic thing of, of them coming uh, on the campus. Uh, to be honest with you, I think the last time may have been in the 1980s. I know as a player at Southern, we always played either in the Astrodome or Houston's or old Robinson Stadium. The only time I ever came to Prairie View's campus as a student athlete, I played baseball as a freshman at Southern, and uh, and I remember coming here. But things have changed so much since then. But, you know, it, it's great for us as a university to host a game like that is is going to show people a lot of the alums why we need a new stadium because you know I when I pulled up this morning I think they were putting up temporary bleachers I know when I rode around yesterday they had not put them up yet so like I say it's a homecoming type event but you know for us as football players and coaches we have to treat it like it's just another game but it it is a big game. About two minutes left for Heist Northern, head coach at Prairie View A&M. Coach, when you when you look at Southern University, what uh, what kind of jumps off the sheet when when you look at them? I see they got a lot of uh, still good players. Um, you know, they're young at the quarterback spot. I'm sitting here looking at film now of their game versus Northwestern State, uh, and they they got playmakers. Uh, you know, some. I mean, if you look at some of the plays as a fan, if you just look at the score, you'll be like, man, they, they just got whooped upon. But it was some things that happened in that game that probably would never happen again if you look at some of the turnovers that happened you know, when Southern was on offense. So as, as me being a coach or defensive-minded coach, as most people would think, we have to find a way to, to create those turnovers and don't give up big plays. But it's, I still think they have one of the best receiving cores in the conference uh, when they're healthy. Uh, I still think they have a good offensive line uh, when healthy. And I know they have some off-the-field issues that's out of Coach Odom's control. But you know, like I say, man, if, if we as coaches in our conference sometimes could just coach football and not have to worry about the lines on the field, the compliance office, the cafeteria being closed, I mean, I, I think we would be so much better had we not have to worry about some of that off the field stuff. Now, we as coaches would never make an excuse, but I know as a coach that's been a head coach where we've had some off the field issues in terms of other areas on campus, it affects those young men. And you try to keep them pushing through it, but it is hard when you got to worry about other stuff. And I'll leave it at that. Coach, we're out of time. We appreciate yes, you sir. joining us here today, and uh, we look forward to talking with you next week. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot. That's head coach Heish North U A and M. And again, his team will play host to Southern University at six PM this Saturday. Next up go and send things over with Dawson Odoms. His team was defeated by Northwestern State and they are at Prairie View again this Saturday at six PM. Good morning, Coach Odoms. Are you with us? Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning, Coach. Thanks for joining us. If you could talk about your game with Northwestern State and preview your rival against uh, Prairie View. We'll play the, you know, we kicked off, uh, you know, good crowd, decent crowd was here at home against Northwestern. You know, we got off to a slow start and they jumped out on us. Uh, you know, we had five turnovers and, you know, we didn't play, we didn't play really well in the first half, but the second half we played much better. Uh, you know we had some distractions right there before, before kickoff, but that's that's understandable. But you know I, I was really proud of how they tried to refocus and, and recommit themselves to playing football, and it's been an ongoing struggle this year. But you know we got to put things behind us and and, and move on and, and try to put the best football team out there that we can. But we came up a little bit of short. We came up short. You know I thought offensively it wasn't a good game that we played. You know especially with those five turnovers and defensively we. We didn't do a good job in the red zone of keeping those guys out of the out of the end zone. You know, they were a good football team. Uh, they played better than we did, and and that's why they got the victory. Floor is now open for Dawson Odom's head coach at Southern University. 
Coach Odoms, good morning. How you doing? Oh, good morning. How you doing? Good. This is uh, Charles Edmond with WPRL. Coach, I know you, you generally want to talk about stuff on the field and in, in between those lines, but obviously you've been asked a bunch of questions about the, the off-the-field stuff. How, how tough has that been in terms of getting your team ready day in, day out, week in, week out? Well, you know, considering some of the players that – that is mentioned as being out, you know, you know, it's a lot of starters. So, you know, we just, we just trying to regroup and, you know, put together the best plan today. But, you know, it's, it's been difficult. It's been a challenge. Uh, you know, it's been some adversity that, you know, I hope no one else has to go through, uh, but we try to deal with it to the best of our ability, but it's hard preparing every week, uh, not knowing. And, you know, but we're gaining on it. We're getting closer to the finish line and wrapping it up. So I just look forward to whatever guys we got trying to get them prepared to go to PV and try to get a win. Coach, it should be a, a, a carnival-like uh, electric atmosphere there at uh, Blackshear Field. It's been a long time since uh, Southern has played at Prairie View at Blackshear Field. Just talk about dealing with, with that whole electric atmosphere, knowing – you know, it's it's kind of a, a rarity. Well, you know, I never I never been there, uh, but I know it's going to be an exciting atmosphere for guys to play in. I know they're excited about having it on their campus, you know, and you know they do a great job down there. Coach Heist does a great job getting these guys prepared. You know, their offense is very explosive. Uh, their defense fly around, but I think it's an atmosphere, you know, that's that's fitting for college football. And I think both of these teams, uh, especially the players and coaches, are going to be outstanding in coaching in that kind of environment. So we just look forward to the opportunity, and and we represent Southern University, and we're going to try to come down and do the best we can and know Coach High School have his football team prepared. We got time to talk things over with Dawson Odoms, head coach at Southern University. Hey, coach, it's Les East. Uh, do you have any uh, update on Malcolm Crockett or Mike Jones's injuries? Uh, no, I know they're supposed to see the doctor uh, today, and once they see them, I have an update probably before we go to practice this evening. And can you talk about what you remember from last year's game? It came at about this time of year, and y'all came from way back, and it seemed to be a springboard for a lot of success y'all had later on. Well, it's a different year, different team, uh, you know, different situation, different circumstances. You know, is you know, I think when you look at both teams, they they not where they want to be. I think they're still trying to get to where they want to be. And this game is, you know, it's a conference game. You know, we're on the same side. And, you know, a competitive game last year that came all the way down to the end, high scoring. Uh, but, you know, both teams possess some talent. And, you know, you got to go play. You got to put put aside anything that can distract you from performing your best. And that's our challenge this week is to get this get this team focused on what needs to be done in order for us to win this football game on Saturday. Do you have any more questions for Dawson Odoms, head football coach at Southern University? Yeah, well, one other thing, Coach. Um, they've already played a conference game, but this is your first one. Can you, when you come into work on Sunday or Monday and you get with the team, can you sense – that it's the first conference game week just by the atmosphere, the players' attitudes. Is there anything that, that tells you it's your first conference week? Not really. You know, it's just, you know, one thing about the players in the in this program is that, you know, we're, we're close. We're close to them as coaches. They're close to each other as players. And, you know, they they got a different feeling about them this week that, I haven't never seen since I've been here. And 
we're trying to figure out, you know, is that a good feeling or a bad feeling? No bad feeling. But the one thing we do know about these players, by the time we get to Saturday, whatever ones we put out there, they will be focused and locked in and ready to go give their best in order to give us a chance to win a football game. Is that different feeling a result of what happened right before kickoff the other night? Well, I mean, I mean, I've spoken to you about it, uh, and you know, yes, I can't control that. You know, I just feel bad for the players. You know, I feel bad for the team. You know, and that's that's really all I can do. I mean, I can't I can't do anything else. You know, I have to I have to take the punches as I get them and deal with the situation as it go. But I feel bad for those players and, and, and these coaches that work so hard. And, you know, I feel bad for the team, you know, because, you know, we this will be the fourth game. Now we'll be playing. I don't know who we'll be playing with, but, you know, but I don't know how they go prepare for us because we don't play with somebody different every game. So, you know, but once we get – once we figure out who we're going to have, we're going to prepare them to the best of our ability and, and we're going to move forward. Thanks. Austin Modem's head coach at Southern University. Do we have any more questions? Coach, we appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us this morning, and we'll talk to you next week. Hey, appreciate it. Thank you. Go Jags. Austin Modem's head coach at Southern University, and his team was at Western State this past Saturday. And this coming Saturday, they are at Prairie View A&M. Kickoff is set for 6 p.m. this Saturday from Prairie View. Up on the call, go to Houston, Texas, and talk things over with Daryl Asbury. His team defeated Central State in the Bahamas this past weekend by a final score of 30 to 16. They come back home to host Alabama A&M this Saturday at. 7 p.m. Good morning, Coach Asbury. Are you with us? Yes, I am. Good morning. Coach, thanks for joining us this morning, and uh, I'm sure it was a long week. If you don't mind sharing it with us, with Central State, revisiting that weekend and talk about uh, coming back home to host your, your first conference game with Alabama A&M. Yeah, it was, it was a great trip. Uh, I thought it was good for the conference, not only the universities, both both schools. Um, we did enjoy our trip, and uh, the kids, I was very impressed with my kids by them being uh, tuned in and no discipline problems, and then they enjoyed themselves Saturday night after the game. So, you know, we, we're very pleased with our with our performance against a tough Central State. They they were a team that they just wouldn't, wouldn't die. They just kept fighting, and um, our kids responded. Uh, coaching staff did a good job of, of preparing these kids, and uh, we were just fortunate to get out of there with a win. Thank you very much, Coach. The floor is now open for Daryl Asbury, head coach at Texas Southern. Coach, talk about the make of your team right now. You, you, you open up right away mentally. It's tough playing your arch rival. Then you, you play one in the Bahamas, and now you're back home to, to host a, a, a pretty good game, which most people would think with Alabama A&M. Yeah, we, we're glad to be back home. Uh, Alabama a and of course, like you said, we open up with a tough prayer view. And um, I thought Texas College, I mean, not um, Central State brought up a lot of enthusiasm with them and we come home now to a tough Alabama A and M which game ended last year in a in a close ball game. Uh this is a game that we've been waiting for for a long time and the kids are tuned in and they're focused. They'll be off today. They wanted to practice today but we gave them the day off and we'll get back started on tomorrow. I mean it's gonna be a great atmosphere. Um hopefully the fans will come out and, and support these guys and you know, we can find a way to get out of here with a victory. Good 
Still taking questions for Daryl Asbury, head coach at Texas Southern. Coach, what do you know about uh, Alabama A&M overall? Well, you know, they, they, I see they're trying to uh, feature two two uh, twins, freshmen, a running back and a linebacker, which are two good athletes. Uh, and uh, they're, they're very physical up front on the defensive line play. Uh, offensive line, you know, Coach Spady, he, he's going to do what he did at Grambling uh, with the football. Uh, very he makes you prepare for a lot of different formations. And, uh, you know, they're a very physical football team, and we just need to maintain our focus and our discipline. You know, I, I thought we've gotten better each week discipline-wise, and, and when I say discipline, the penalties and everything. So, um, you know, if we don't beat ourselves, I think we'll be okay. Talk about the development of Jamal Small. Coach, um, I mean, two-headed monster throwing the football and also appears to be another running back at times with what he's able to do on the ground. Yeah, Jamal kind of puts you in the mind of uh, back in the day with uh, with Bruce Eugene where he can run and throw the football. Um, you know, he's, he's really developed. Uh, he's seeing the field better now. But we still need to get a, get a little bit better at that position. Uh, you know, I'm very Proud of Jamal for stepping in while Homer was uh, injured. Um, you know, when we get both of them back health, well, Homer back health, we'll have two good quarterbacks that can go at any time. So i uh, very pleased and very uh, uh, appreciative to have a quarterback that can step in and the team doesn't miss a beat. Coach, 